Hello everyone and welcome back! That's because you were just watching a previous episode or listening to it perhaps on a podcast of your choice. And by podcast, I mean podcast provider. This intro is already going swimmingly. Ian, I hope you had a great vacation because you're not here today. It's me, your host, William Crosby, joined today by the, the amazing, the incomparable, Kyle Bailey. Me. I'm it's, incomparable. It's him. He's incomparable. And also joining us is the very comparable uh, David from Safe Data. What up? Hello. I just I just swap you guys out. You're all the same to me from uh, Safe That's Data. Fair. So, and we're all other than Elias white dudes with beards. So interchangeable. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Does Zach finally say family people instead of family men at the end of the show? <laughs> I catch that every time. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> he did say family men today, but also it was me and That's Chris true. going away, so it was okay. I did notice that. Very inclusive. Um, folks, we are a gaming podcast, and we talk about all sorts of things gaming. If you're even tuned into the gaming world, you know this week was a big week for gaming. It was the amazing E3, and we've got a bunch of E3 news for you. It's not quite an entire overview of e3 it's more of a uh distillation uh because i don't want to talk that much and neither do these two uh but we are going to start as always with my favorite segment which is where we take off all of our no it's a different podcast for this podcast though my favorite segment is when we talk about what we have been playing and boy one of us has been playing a lot of things so I'm going to start with that person, and it's not Kyle with the one, it's David. I don't know who the, you mean. <laughs> with, with the six I games, I have no idea games. what you mean. Um, someone else was on vacation, I heard. Uh, wa- Listen, walk us through this. Vacation plus unemployment. So, <laughs> Oh, perfect. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I've, I've had some time to play games, and I have been playing a lot of them. Uh, so uh, you know, I'll end with the one we've both been playing well. So first perfect. off... Literally, the first game I played once I got back from my trip. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake Intermission slash Intergrade. Horrible name. (laughs) The DLC is called Intermission, and the full game on PS5 with the DLC is called Intergrade. Why are there two names? I don't know. Uh, You get to play as Yuffie, though. So if you played Final Fantasy VII, she's the uh, ninja girl from Wutai, who was a completely optional character in the original game. You did not have to get her at all. Uh, And she had really no real backstory for most of the game. Uh, Gotcha. So this DLC, it's like four-ish hours long, I think. Um, If you main path it, probably like three. Honestly, a lot of fun. She's probably the funnest character to play in that game. So that's awesome. She has like a mix of melee and range, which is new. Uh, And some cool spells. She gets a buddy who you can not control directly, but you can order Mm. around. And uh, you can do some cool tag team attacks. So if you liked Final Fantasy Fantasy VII Remake, this is more of that. And it kind of fills in some Yuffie backstory leading into the second game. And at the end, there are some... Uh, cutscenes and post credit scenes that kind of set up for where the next game will start off from. Oh, yeah, because cool. this is only half of the original game, right? Final Fantasy Remake? Not even. It's like the first 10 hours of the original game, if not oh, less. Oh, jeez. Are they... Are they... Um, um, are they making a second game, or are they making, like, second, third more parts? Or have they not said? I, they haven't said. Oh, okay. Not sure. Um, I imagine there'll be separate games at full price, but yeah. with how good this game was, like I'm totally cool with that. Uh, so that's really it for that. It, it's more of that stuff, but even better. Had some new boss fights, some really hard boss fights too that I haven't uh, gotten to yet. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm not optional quite done stuff. with it. Yeah, totally optional. But uh, like I, I platinum the base game, so I want to finish this off too. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Um, and I also played this game. This, this armored core mecha ish game called Damon X Machina. Uh, it's on switch. It's not great. I'm just going <laughs> to put that out there. I'm not going to keep playing it, but uh, don't buy that one. <laughs> oh, let me just get out my list it's, and write that. Don't buy. Combat's Do kind of fun, but the story is bad and very slow. 
and has some of the worst characters I've seen in a long time. What? So uh, let me pass on that one. Was that a hyped, like an E3 or something? That was shown at something. Yeah, it was shown a few times in like 2019. Um, and I got it, I think at the end of 2019. I just hadn't played it yet. And wow. It was on my Switch when I was taking a trip. So I was like, oh, I'll boot this up and play this a bunch. It wasn't a bunch. <laughs> um... <laughs> it's only a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was like a few hours and it just feel like like didn't feel like the game was going anywhere <laughs> um it, it really felt like writing never evolved from armored cord one on the ps1 i mean and writing has they have devolved <laughs> <laughs> they have devolved from there uh so skip that one uh another game i went back and played life is strange before the storm did have either of you guys played life is strange i played the first game is before the storm like a DLC or a prequel or something? Yeah, so it's a prequel to the first game. You play okay. as Chloe. Mm. Um, blue, hair, blue hair girl? Yep. Well, okay. she doesn't have blue hair in Before the Storm, but yeah. Okay. Uh, Same I, girl. Um, I, I watched someone play well, one, and then I played... Actually, so Life is Strange 2 is a different game, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay, so I've never played... Because uh, we talked about this... I forget when Kyle, you were there, but I I thought I had played Life is Strange too. I didn't. I had played the first chapter of Life is Strange before the storm. I am now realizing um, because that was oh. all that was out at the time, and the job we were at it was on their Steam account, and so I so played. Techni- a- technically, you're still playing it in order. Oh, I guess <laughs> I am. Um, so I I played up to the chapter that ends with them. I think they're on a train. That yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah okay that's, that's as much as i played a, that's part of a chapter um but yeah it, it was fun i don't think it was as good as the first one because like i'm not gonna spoil the story but if you played the first one you know where all the characters from this game end up so yeah there's not a ton of wiggle room for them to really explore new stuff uh, and I, the things like I thought they were going to have this game be leading directly into the first game, like it would end a day or two before the first game starts. That's not the case. That is, that oh, is really? not what happens. Um, it's further before that. It follows Chloe and uh, this other character who you don't actually see in the first game. She's brought up a lot. Uh, Rachel Amber and how they know each other and stuff. But yeah, I really thought it was going to go a different direction. The direction it went was fine, but not not anything super exciting for me. Like I, I really thought they were going to explore some of the not plot holes, but backstory more of the first game, mm-hmm. uh, and they just didn't. So you honestly don't even really need to play the first game. It's kind of a standalone. It might be better as a standalone than as a prequel, honestly, because um, gotcha. then you don't actually know where it's going to go. Um, so that stuff was cool. Enjoyed it. Not as good as the first one the mechanic of the first one where you can like roll back conversations doesn't exist. It's instead you have a dialogue option a few times where basically you just tear into people verbally. Nice. (laughs) Wish I had really really took that character and uh, just made that her superpower, I guess. Yeah, they really did. That's pretty much her superpower (laughs) is just to like essentially tear people down. Um, which is entertaining a few times and then it gets kind of old. So press, press X to, I don't know, tear down the patriarchy or something. It's if you played um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, it's basically where they stole flighting from. I, I haven't played any Assassin's Creed games in like eight years. So, so Valhalla had this system where you do like poetry rap battles, basically, where you I need to buy Valhalla now. <laughs> It, you take a word from so, like the phrase someone else said before you, and then you twist it into your next line. That's awesome. Which is literally the system from Before the Storm. They okay. copy and pasted it. Wow. The only sort of wordplay <laughs> gameplay that I was aware of that existed in modern video games was the Ghost of Tsushima, where you make a haiku. Oh, that like, one's that was so it. good. Yeah. But, um, so it, it still, was kind, interesting. So it was just kind of disappointing, though, overall. It just wasn't as good as the first one. I think I think it is better as a standalone than as a prequel, honestly. Mm. Like, if they had done the same system and had separate characters and called it Life is Strange 2 before 2 existed, I would have liked it better. Uh, I just felt yeah. like there were too many 
constraints of having in a prequel that they didn't really get to explore a lot of. Yeah. And the stuff I wanted them to explore, they didn't. So I was a little miffed about that, honestly. Are you planning on playing the other ones? Uh, I'll probably play two eventually. True Colors, I'm on the fence about. I'm going to wait for people to review that one, honestly. Um, it does seem very like, you know, woman is a therapist and has empathy, which isn't really a superpower. And <laughs> so it, it seems kind of stereotypical compared yeah. to the other Life of Stranges. So I'm going to wait and see what some other people think about that game before I dive into it. I feel like, the, I, I don't mean this to sound as harsh as it probably sounds, but I feel like that You're studio is telltaling where they're just making the yeah. same game multiple times well it's two studios so oh, wait, oh the one making true colors is deck nine who made before the storm oh gotcha and then life is strange one and two it's was don't, 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 nod. Nod. don't nod yeah, yeah. <clears throat> i still I, so I, it's yeah I, I just feel like they're not innovating enough and like the cool thing i think i, I mean i'm i'm probably uh, people probably think opposite to me but i think the cool thing about life is strange one is putting those elements into a teen drama like the, the yeah. uh, supernatural elements into a teen drama that makes it interesting and when you try to strip that away too. yeah and it was a cool superpower and it was also a detective story um yeah. so when you strip that stuff away i like i don't i don't have enough interest in college and teen drama to just want that and as great mm -hmm. as inclusive game like t did they they did tell me why as well right that was don't nod yeah yeah as great as inclusive they are with like all of their stuff which is fantastic and also games have great soundtracks i just i don't with what they show on the outside makes me not want to approach them at all yeah i i feel that they're they are becoming like a telltale series of like it's largely the same game over and over again and they're not really innovating on it yeah um that's how i feel about true colors which is why i'm gonna wait on that one so we'll we'll see on that um i guess the last one before will you can actually kick off the the last game of mine we can talk about together uh, oh. i started hyperlight drifter at uh, chris's recommendation uh, so I finally started playing that game literally today, and I'm like two bosses in. Kind of fun, but it's it's a 2D action game similar in style to in, in mechanical style to Hades, honestly. And it's just not as tight as Hades is. So it's very hard going back and playing this game from like 2016, 2017. That is so not as tight as Hades, but has very similar play style. Mm -hmm. So I'm not liking it as much as it's been hyped up to me, but I am enjoying it enough that I'm probably gonna keep playing. I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for Jake to pop into the chat like the Kool Aid Man. <laughs> <laughs> Heard you he was talking shit. He loves that game <laughs> so, so much. does Chris. I'm curious um, if he's played Hades and if he's played Hyper Light Drifter since playing Hades because it's it's not tight I, it just isn't <laughs> i've tried hyper so i haven't played hades i've tried hyper light drifter i think it is one of the most stunning beautiful video games and i've played a little bit of it and it just wasn't for me like i still think i could go back and play it it's just at the time i didn't want to but i mm -hmm. i anytime jake brings it up on twitter i so i reply to it being like oh is that the game you won't play and i he like <laughs> likes the tweet or something but i i feel like it really gets to his bones and it's not funny at all but i will continue to do it because i find it funny <laughs> um, because half the time it like includes the hyperlight drifter tagged in it like the the developer so i just want it just feels good but i i can see where you're coming from as someone who has seen both played a little bit of hyperlight Dr drifter and seen hades which I realized is now coming to Game Pass, so I can finally play it. Um, August. Yeah. It'll be uh, it'll be interesting to make that comparison for myself as well. Yeah, and like every game after Hades now has to compete with like how well Hades was done, which is going to be hard. <laughs> I mean, that's what happens when you spend time on a video game and make it really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. <clears throat> Uh, Will, tell us about the game we've both been playing. Oh boy, should I tell you about the game we've both been playing? 
<laughs> we have both been playing. I've finished. Did you finish? Or are you still playing it? Latin of it, yeah. Okay. I'm close. Okay. <laughs> Daddy's close. Uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, not Ratchet and Clank Ripped a Fart, um, is the latest Ratchet and Clank game. And by golly, it is great. Uh, it is the first Ratchet and Clank game I've ever played. Uh, I do enjoy the occasional platformer with collectibles and all sorts of stuff. Uh, and this, I feel like, is the tightest one of those I've ever played. It really keeps you on track oh, yeah. for all the collectibles. Most of them aren't too far out of the out of the way if you want to go grab something. Um, Ian talked about this with Mass Effect 2. Um, and that when you go a side route and you finish the side route thing, it pops you back to the beginning of the side route. And mm -hmm. Ratchet and Clank does that most of the time. Uh, like when you first you get up to like a, a on the first area, you get up to one of the spy bots and you grab it, and immediately you can jump down a tunnel that brings you right back to where the beginning was. So I, I like that. It's overall, I think it's just a really tight game. Um, I'm saying tight a lot. Uh, we I did it first. You didn't know why. <laughs> <laughs> as, as someone who, also as someone who knows nothing about Ratchet and Clank, it makes me want to go play the other Ratchet and Clank games uh, just to check them out. I know they're not, uh, from what I've heard from a couple of people, as amazing as this. Um, also, this game looks beautiful. Uh, I was playing on the. I started on the thirty frames default, and then I was like, I need more frames. So I went to the 60 performance ray tracing and I stayed on that for the rest of the game. A couple times I went back and forth just to check things. There was noticeable stuff with the, cause the performance ray tracing tells you what it changes. So it's like, there's some yep. like spawning stuff and everything. So occasionally I feel like enemy explosion stuff wouldn't finish. Like it would half explode and then just disappear. And I would, ha there would be oh, some I like notice that occasional spawning issues and i felt like the fur tech the anti-aliasing on their fur got worse the farther into the game you went like it was great on performance yeah. ray tracing at the beginning but as it went it just got worse and worse uh but overall, i think they do more close-ups the later in the game you get yeah because like there's more story bits so they're like really close to ratchet and rivet's faces and it's like oh the fur doesn't look as good on performance yeah um and this is the last thing i'll say before uh david you can give all your thoughts i think it's about 15 seconds from ps5 dashboard to in game it real is quick. so it's fast real quick. it is insanely fast and that counts like there are one or two places where the ships are flying and you can tell they're hiding a load there but that was really only that only happened to me because I I flew to a planet, jumped out and got back in and flew to another planet because I realized I went to the wrong one. And uh, yeah, those are the only load screens are yeah. going to a completely different world. Yeah, exactly. Um, I thought the writing was great. The story was great. I, I could guess a lot of the story beats, but that actually made me more excited that I like guessed them. Uh, if uh, I mean, not even guessing them, but like knew what was going to come next. And it's like cool to see that sort of stuff and uh yeah uh david what are your thoughts uh i liked it a lot i might be a little colder on it than you but not by not by a ton um story wise honestly it was way too similar to crash 4 i know that's a weird comparison to make but like <laughs> the box is way too similar to crash 4 <laughs> story wise like i can't believe these games took came out like a year apart from each other and the devs for Ratchet must have seen Crash come out and be like, ah, oh, we did that too. Well, we're not changing it. <laughs> like the villain stuff, almost identical. Literally almost identical. Oh, really? Identical. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Uh, so that part was wild to, to play through. Um, I had a lot of fun. I thought there were a lot of things that, based on what they had shown, I was a little disappointed on. I thought there would be more stuff with rifts or that we could control the rifts more, but they're really only in pre-scripted things. There's that's really it. Like you can go through some pre-scripted rift things yeah. and then there's the pocket dimensions that have one rift each and that's it. So I was a little disappointed at that. I thought we'd be able to more actively use that stuff minus 
the weapon you get towards the end of the game if you do all the collectibles, which is cool. The rhino. Um, did oh, you get that, Will? That's the, that's the one that just shoots a portal. Yeah. And the enemies fall. So the rhino is awesome. There's a bunch of Easter eggs with it. Uh, highly recommend if you play this. I think you need all the gold bolts to get the rhino, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. No, all um, the lost bots. Oh, lost bots. Sorry. Uh, you need all the lost bots, which I recommend you doing because the rhino is hilarious, especially once you upgrade it and you throw literally characters at them sometimes. Uh, so that stuff was cool. The guns I mostly really enjoyed. I was a little disappointed in how samey some of them were to each other and to previous, yeah. like the 2016 game. Because um, a lot of them, like the topiary one, cool but it's really just a grenade from the one in 2016. They just put a different face on it. Uh, and like Mr. or Mrs. Fungi, I forget which which thing it's called. Um, oh, Mr. Fungi. Mr. Zircon from 2016, but less fun because they don't have fun voice lines. Uh, Mr. Zircon has hilarious voice lines in 2016. He is a murder bot. It's great. Um, the cameos and stuff were great. The story was pretty good. I think the other problem I had was I got stuck a lot of places, especially on the second planet, Sargasso, uh, where I had to slowly kill myself by jumping into pools repeatedly. I got stuck uh, on, so like, geometry. Like, literally I stuck a, a couple times. I got a little bit of that. My problem was I went to areas that apparently I wasn't supposed to go to yet. Like, oh. I went to some of those, like, oil derricky looking things that were over the the acid pits that I wasn't supposed to get to and you couldn't float from those places to land and if you hit the acid stuff you just got pushed back to the thing you were stuck on um so that happened to me a few times which is like oof you I had like 30 health and every time I jumped in the acid I lost 3 and got respawned so it took a while to kill myself those times <laughs> to like reset um so that wasn't great but but overall, I had a very good time with the game. Uh, it was very fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm so high on it because I literally like sat down. And I think I played like eight hours of it the first day, and then the next session I pretty much just beat it. Uh, yeah, and I also I beat it in two sessions too. <laughs> yeah, as someone who's been playing a lot of like RPGs and RimWorld and all sorts of stuff, it was nice to just like sit down and be like, not like it's a dumb game, but it's like. I can just kind of like zone out and like play a platformer, shoot things, shoot weapons. Um, I, I agree. There were, I felt like there were too many weapons, not too many weapons, but like, I felt like they, there were a lot of weapons and they gave you less ammo for each weapons to make you use more weapons. And it wasn't always that yeah. fun to keep switching weapons. Um, was, Cause I kind of had my favorites. Yeah. But I, I ended up using a lot of different ones and discovering a lot of weapons. Um, I, I used say... them all pretty much once I maxed the level for one. I stopped using it mm -hmm. unless, unless I was in like a boss fight where I really needed it or something. But yeah, some of the weapons were very similar too. like there was a grenade and then there was a grenade you can throw that throws other grenades. And there was a grenade <laughs> yeah. you can throw that explodes into more grenades. And I'm just like, OK those were all kind of just the same thing <laughs> and like the the like um the razor gun and like the electric gun were pretty similar um and like the the, I the ricochet and the buzz blades were too similar the ricochet i didn't like having to pull the trigger every time to make it like ricochet mind. i just still like for the ricochet there was like a timing window where it does more damage yeah, I never, I never. In the game, that, yeah. and I don't know what the timing yeah, window is. Like, there's no, no indicator for which one was doing more damage. So I'm just like, okay, well, I'm just spamming the button more, I guess. Yeah, that's all Whatever. I did. Um. Uh. Also, I thought I'm pretty sure I have every weapon, but I do not have the trophy for buying every weapon. Oh, you have to do challenge mode, and then the first time you see Mrs. Zircon, you buy another. You get the last weapon. It's stupid. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna. I started challenge mode because I think I have, I have that trophy, and the only other trophy is uh, reflect ten things with the barrier, which I never oh. did. So which I hate because you have to get that weapon to level five before that ability unlocks. So oh, that's, that's fun. Oh well, at least just the game do it plays in fun. the. Just do it in the arena. Yeah. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. I like yeah. the arena. 
Um, but yeah, overall, I was really into it. I think I might go check out uh, the other Ratchet and Clank games. Uh, probably won't play them all, but I, I, it is unlocked an appreciation for those characters that I never had. So I definitely enjoyed that. And looking forward to what they do in the future. Um, Kyle... It's your turn. Still what here. have you been playing? Yeah. You're still here. Uh, um, <laughs> no, the, the Ratchet and Clank stuff is interesting. I've, I've never played any of the games in the series. But it's funny that you mentioned the stuff about weapons, about their... <laughs> I think you sort of... You, you said that there were too many, and then you backed up and said that it wasn't that there were too many. Because I watched... I think it was a Digital Foundry video on, on some of the tech that went in... That obviously the, in, uh, Insomniac is implementing there. And they mentioned specifically the... I don't know why I'm remembering this, but they said that there were actually less weapons than the last game had. Which oh, I thought was out. interesting. Yeah. Um, and by a lot, a, but a a, few. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of people and I remember when that game came out and a lot of people were like best Ratchet and Clank game ever. And people are saying that this was just leaps and bounds better than that one, which I think is pretty incredible. And I I think also that Insomniac is arguably the best triple A developer working today and just the amount of polish that they put into their stuff and the amount of stuff that they are putting out is is really incredible um and uh, you know you don't really hear anything bad about them either as far as crunch goes and stuff i think i think they're really what like they crunch oh I, I that's what i'm saying is you don't hear about it like you hear about that shit with um you know naughty dog and and rockstar and and a bunch of the other devs and i know they do crunch but i think they do a way better job of managing the the culture around that and and trying to mitigate burnout from devs and mm -hmm. i i i if i had to work anywhere i'd probably want to work at insomniac if it was in the triple a space but um anyway that's that's my i don't have a playstation 5 viewpoint from <laughs> for of, of ratchet and clank um but yeah i have been playing apex legends because we played it on tuesday and then i played it again on wednesday for streams and uh, we were supposed to do a double stream last night of Apex Legends for like the first 45 minutes and then jump into Destiny 2. And we had so much fun in Apex Legends and we were actually doing pretty well, consistently getting like three and third and third and second in, in each match. And, and I was actually I could feel myself improving like as the night went on, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, it's it's I, I've just been busy and haven't had a lot of time to play a lot of games. But I also I really wanted to download Mass Effect um, or to buy Mass mm. Effect Legendary Edition, but I just haven't. I like I kind of want to wait for a sale, which I know is going to take another four or five months. But um, yeah, I I, I want to dig my dig my teeth back into that series again. But uh, I didn't yeah. write it on the list, but I also played that. <laughs> All right. David, you have to go through everything again and, and work your way back up to Mass Effect. So yeah. Let's start over. Yeah, yeah, let's we'll cut it here and we'll start over. Yeah. Yeah. God, no. Please continue. <laughs> it's but, good. You should play it. That's yeah, all I'm yeah, gonna and, say. And I, I've I've played through the series. I've probably played each game. I've played three the least amount of times, which I think was two or three, and I've played one and two probably like ten times each, like just straight through the campaign. Um, I did a, I did a, a lot of my time uh, and effort in college, at least my first two years before I started taking like actual film classes, was spent not doing work for the crappy gen eds that I had to take, and was spent probably murdering my poor laptop CPU by trying to run both of those games. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I adore that series so much. And apparently not that we're supposed to talk about Ian when he's not here, but apparently Ian is like a fan now. I know it's or disturbing. We got him. So we got him. <laughs> Although I'm just not I, used. To, I'm not used to him liking something other people like. It's I I have a sneaking suspicion that he likes one more than he likes two. I yeah, and I I think um, yeah, which I think true. were a lot of reasons we brought up last week were because uh, we were we waited, we endured mm. um, between one and two, but uh, he yeah. didn't. <laughs> Um, and I mean, like like you said before, he has all that DLC that that is presented yeah, that as just is, normal parts of the game. <laughs> that was interesting because he was saying how much that game makes you do before doing more main main story stuff. And Kyle and I, detectives that we are, discovered that that game doesn't tell you what was DLC. You are correct. Yes. <laughs> so he did a bunch of stuff not knowing he didn't technically have to do it right away. And uh, mm -hmm. so I think that weighed into his opinion a little bit. Um, but yeah, 
that um that about does it the only other i finished dragon quest 8 this week uh i was very excited i got elise from save data into it and then she promptly beat it with like within a week uh <laughs> while i had been i started in february uh, which is it's funny too because we had pretty much the exact same hour count for the entire game um we were chatting about it in the save data discord and then today i started dragon quest sorry dragon warrior one which is the english localization of dragon quest one uh, i'm playing on my nes classic somehow it's on there i don't know if nintendo made a mistake when they sent it to me it's weird it just happens to have it nice yeah it's super weird um it's i'm literally only i think fifth an hour into it um it is as someone who's dabbled in a little bit of ultima uh it is surprisingly ultima like you pop up a menu uh you stand on the thing pop up a menu say like oh search the area you walk up to a person hit the menu talk you go to stairs you hit the button and click on stairs to go down the stairs or up the stairs you click on like Jeez. like it is it is so much more Ultima than any, like the JRPG combat's there, but it's it's crazy how much, like the, the overworld map going into cities, like as someone who, was, who made it like a couple hours into Ultima 4, it is, it is crazy. It's almost like the console version of Ultima 4, which was for the Genesis. Um, so that's, that's super interesting. I, I might actually think of doing a video about it. But who knows? Um, part, of me, part of me thought that you were saying, like, I, I didn't realize that Ultima was a game. And I was like, dude, that's so Ultima. Like, like that's so <laughs> rad. I was like, is, is, that a th is that like slang that I'm missing out on for a second? <laughs> yeah, it's the new hit slang so <laughs> that Will's really into. Dude, so Ultima. Um, <laughs> yes, the game series Ultima. Um, yeah, it's it, it was it took me by surprise because I was not expecting that um how long to beat says about nine hours for this so i figured that's that's enough time i can spend playing and trying to figure out an old nes game um yeah it's rough i should have bought the mobile version but the mobile version looks like garbage so i'm playing this version um that is it for what we have been playing now there's not a ton of news this week, so I am going to say that we are going to talk about E3 and then circle back to the actual news. Um, because then we could even do a quick hits at the end before we choose the game. So we're going to move into the news section. And that means one thing, the E3 news section has to be, uh, it has to be sung in by our most intrepid singer songstress we like to call him uh and here's the news theme here's the news we're talking about news it's gaming news what's up news oh fun fact about the guy who wrote that song uh loves oh, pac-man no. <laughs> a little too much little too much and racist uh moving on <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> um ubisoft we're gonna go in order here of the pressers uh i did not put summer games fest on here because we talked about it last week because i forgot it happened on a thursday so we're not going to talk about it here i did put elden ring in my misc thing but we'll get to that when we get to misc for miss oh, miscellaneous do you guys say misc when it's shortened no it's miscellaneous I no i know it's miscellaneous but i no I, you just say the word miscellaneous it's et cetera et cetera sorry it's oh a community <laughs> joke um so we're going to start with Ubisoft Forward. The way I structured this is I had each of us pick our top three things from every press conference to make this go a little bit faster and to discuss some of these things a little bit more funly. Uh, and then I was going to just read through some of the other releases if we missed anything big. Um, so starting with the Ubisoft Forward that was at 3 p.m. Eastern on the Lord's Day of Saturday. Um 
I uh, the only highlight for me there, other than the 14 hours of Rainbow Six that they decided to show, was the Mario and Rabbids. Um, David, you also put this down. Oh um, yeah. Ian is a huge fan of Mario and Rabbids. Uh, the first one, he thinks it's better than XCOM. I don't think it is, but for completely different reasons. Um, you can listen to last week's podcast if you'd like to know those reasons. It's mostly <laughs> sexual. No, I uh, just can't. The bunnies, you know? Mostly. Uh, you know, rabid <laughs> peach. Just, <laughs> yeah, rabid just rabid for her, right? <laughs> She's rabid for me. Uh, <laughs> at least in that fan art I pay for. Um, I... Uh, <laughs> I, I think this looks really cool. There's something about Mario, not only Mario with the rabbits, but he like looks more gritty in this. And like, I, I don't know. Dual wielding pistols. Dude. Yeah. And there's something about <laughs> Mario games aren't super detailed and showing him on the bridge of a spaceship. That's like really well detailed with like star charts and stuff. That isn't like the goofy uh, Mario galaxy sort of thing. I was like, what is this? Um, the first game is currently on sale. Ian's been trying to get me to play it forever. So I think I might finally bite the bullet and play that. Um, this, they look like they changed from the grid system to like a circle radius sort of run system, uh, which I think could be interesting. That's a cool improvement. Uh, David, what are your thoughts? Pretty much the same as yours. I've been meaning to play it. I picked it up. I just haven't uh, actually played the first game yet, but I love XCOM. I love like strategy games. So i'm sure i'll enjoy it and this looks just improved and interesting so i i'm hyped for this one sweet um kyle what you got for me yeah so um i'll actually go from the bottom up but far cry 6 um i have not played a far cry game since three um I tried Primal and didn't like it after like two hours and just just gave up. Uh, so I don't really count that one. But I'm a, I like Giancarlo Esposito. Like he's cool. Yeah. Um, I, I like some of the more ridiculous sort of homemade gun stuff that you can do. But uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel like it could be a solid entry. But, you know, we'll, we'll, it could, of course, just be another Ubisoft Far Cry. A Ubisoft. Yeah. Uh, a, what is it? Yeah. A Ubisoft. <laughs> production yeah. uh, 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 ubisoft original uh, uh, ubisoft original uh, yeah. uh, ubisoft original and carl uh, our op yelled at us because it's pronounced ubisoft so a uh, ubisoft original ubisoft does sound or, better guess, yeah but since i and us say ubisoft ubisoft, uh, ubisoft original just also why are you writing that you're the publisher <laughs> stop tom clancy's ubisoft original but <laughs> Oh, exactly. that's really what they they call it in-house that's what they call it um but yeah i yeah i'm, I'm i could be excited for it um yeah. rocksmith is uh, i remember when the the original came out or, or what i think it was yeah this is like technically rocksmith 2 right yes i believe so this yeah. it's like two but also it's a subscription service it's weird yeah so i i don't really care about like the the game itself i just kind of want to learn like to play an instrument because I can really only slightly play piano. I can kind of sight read and I would, I've always wanted, wished I could play at least like the ukulele or something with strings. And I feel like this, you know, could be interesting. Maybe we could do like a stream series where it's like, watch someone improve playing guitar over, you know, six months or something like that. I don't know. Um, and then for avatar, I'm not like the world's biggest Avatar fan. I, I enjoyed the movie. I, I don't think it was terrible. I don't think it's the greatest thing ever. But if there's one thing that I did pull away from watching it, it was that, hey, that's a cool world that I would love to play around in somehow. So it's done by Massive. Apparently, it's going to be first person with sequences of third person. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I, I think I read something like that. And speaking of, we do have some Massive news that we'll get to later on. Uh, but literally massive news from massive. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I just, I feel like it was, you know, stuff with the avatar franchise is going to start ramping up what the end of this year or. Yeah. 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 Um, Cause avatar two is coming out uh, or going to be coming. I don't Who knows? James Cameron's made like six of them apparently already. Uh, and I don't know. I, I, never bet against james cameron and if it's something that he's involved with it did they announce that he was like at all involved in the in the game 
like I don't even as, I don't as a consultant or something. Any of it. You you would have. I mean, he's gotta he's gotta be on some level like a part of it even if it's just like yeah i went to the studio and looked at a computer screen for five minutes and then walked away um <laughs> but i don't know i i feel like i i feel like it could there's a lot of potential in the games that i listed i'm not a huge XCOM fan so that's why i didn't put mario plus rabbits but i've also never played mario plus rabbits so maybe i would prefer it like like ian says he does yeah. over XCOM. but um yeah that's that's really those are my picks for ubisoft <laughs> sweet i um i said it i think i said it on the stream and i'll say it again avatar would be a great rts world i don't know why it yeah. isn't um i don't That's i don't true. even have that much fondness for it but i think it would be great also would be great for like a um jurassic park extinction type like yes. you're yeah. if it's not quite an rts like it's that sort of going into a jurassic an, park evolution um it's like the run the theme the park, park sort of yeah. thing yeah but yeah. I, I actually you know a better comparison would be like a banished where you're trying to or like i mean for lack of a better term back better game a factorio where you're invading a planet you're trying to build up a factory and the indigenous people oh. are fighting you <laughs> oh i think that'd be cool and you get a robot with a giant knife um Jesus, great Christ. game! You just had to work Factorio, and you just yeah. had to force that. Yeah, and Goofy's <laughs> there; it'd be great. Um, David, you got one other game you threw up on here. Oh yeah, Rainbow Six Extraction. I was utterly uninterested in this game until the conference. Um, because previously Rainbow Six Quarantine, I didn't care about it. Uh, then they were actually showing some of the mechanics and stuff. It looks like a very fun co-op. Not quite Left for Dead. It's not as like goofy and just like, com- just unload your clip into zombies. Like there was actual strategy and like stealth and stuff. So it, it honestly looked appealing to me. I get why it may not look great to others, but uh, it looked fun. It, it looked like a more tactical, uh, multiplayer thing for people that I can just play with some friends and have a good time. So yeah it's on there i liked i liked siege a lot when it first came out i played it a lot i liked the single player stuff and i wish they had expanded that i wish they expanded the um like offline with your co-op friends experience a lot more like i think going against ai operators would be really fun um or even well, like expanded this is scenarios just against this is just pve as far right as right aware. so that's so, why that's why that's i'm excited I'm for this in, yeah. um because i enjoyed the early days of uh, siege when like the terrorist hunts were new and stuff so this yep. uh this seems to really scratch that itch it felt the the trailer they had felt a little cartoony but the gameplay seemed less cartoony yeah, um, it, it definitely did. I don't know why they were kind of doing that, but yeah, I, I think that looks really exciting. Um, other stuff from the Ubisoft Forward, um, I forgot to pop up the list for that. There was that uh, the Descenders game, Downhill Descenders, Rough Riders, Riders. Oh, Riders Republic. Riders Republic from the Steep People. I think that looks pretty cool. If that was on Game Pass or something, I think I would pick it up. Yeah, it um, looks fine. I'm not going to buy it. You're right. Yeah, I'm not going to pay for yeah. it. But um, those kind of games that are like on the rims of sports games are are usually pretty fun when you just like happen to sit down and play them. Uh, great. So moving on, we come to the Xbox and Bethesda. Um, uh, what what's your what's your bet that next year it's not called Xbox and Bethesda? It's just called Xbox. Hundred percent. It's okay. gonna be Xbox next year. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. Um, Todd Howard graced the stage at the very beginning, not in a leather jacket, um, to show oh, us yeah. the trailer to the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And he didn't that, give us anything. No, he didn't give us he nothing. Us nothing. <laughs> there was I, nothing in the trailer. <laughs> I have a huge, huge uh, nostalgia affinity, whatever you call it, for Bethesda RPGs. I, I played all of them except for Fallout 76 because it's not really an RPG. Uh, I get people's issues with those games. I get people's issues with those engines, all that sort of stuff. But I'm excited for Starfield. I think what they're pitching in that trailer looked pretty cool it seemed like a 
What are they pitching? It was nothing. No, Listen, but I, like the uh, as far I'm as that, I'm in the same boat as you. I've played most of them. I'm looking forward to this game, but like this trailer was fucking nothing. No, I agree. It was nothing. <laughs> but uh, the the I, I meant pitching as far as what the world sort of looks like. If it's any uh, uh, guess at Space. what the world would be like, no, but it, the type of rocket ship he was doing, it had like igniters, like an old style rocket ship igniters. So that kind of like leans me towards like if this may be some sort of like sixties, seventies. Uh, future exactly tech sort of thinking, thing yeah. um i think that's cool uh if they can really nail it right um it kind of to me watching that trailer and it's i know we said this on the stream but it was exactly what i thought it would be where they just showed like a cg trailer or i mean i know yeah. it was partially in in game um but they they weren't going to show anything else and that's like classic bethesda where it's like they want to tease you for as long as possible despite you know whether or not there's actually anything of any quality at the end of that tease um but it to me i've actually been watching uh the apple tv show apple tv plus uh go subscribe boom um for all offer mankind. code subpixel yeah offer code subpixel no uh and for all mankind is sort of if you don't know it's it's if the russians got to the moon before we did and sort of the space race never ended and it goes oh, up. I cool. think I'm in, the, I'm in the second season now, and I think it's in the 80s. It's either the late 70s or early 80s. Yeah, it's it's the 80s. And um, they've got like, it's basically if we if we funneled a, just a ton of taxpayer money into NASA development tech, and and it sort of follows this trajectory. And this actually looks like what that show would look like if it continued on like another 50 years or 60 years. Um, where it's like we, we've we've got better technology, even better technology than we do now, but it's still based in that sort of 60s, 70s era technology look and feel. Um, and that's exciting for me because like I play, I, I shouldn't say this, I play Star Citizen. Um, I, I dabble in, you know, space sims and, and stuff like that. And it's always, it always looks and feels futuristic. And it's mm -hmm. nice to feel a little bit more grounded even when looking at something. That being said, take everything that you see with a grain of salt and everything that, you know, mm -hmm. Todd Howard tells you with a massive grain of salt, because he's got those sweet little eyes that he loves to, His puppy dog loves to give you. Yeah. See that grain of salt um, over there? You can climb it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can. You can put it in your salad. Um, moving on. I, I also really enjoyed Stalker 2. That trailer Sorry. and gameplay was really cool. Um, we, Ian and I talked about this on one of the streams, but I there's a lot of other games that were shown throughout E3, including, was it Atomic Heart? Um, yep. There was another, There were I think there were two others that were post-apocalyptic, gun fetish, Russian RPGs. <laughs> um and what what i my theory is when stalker 2 was originally announced and then canceled all of those rpgs were like well there's no stalker 2 let's let's make our own thing and they all spun up and then they re-announced stalker 2 and now it's this awkward moment where everyone's releasing at the same time <laughs> so it's like <laughs> oh no the people who are really good at it came out with it and we weren't early enough like the Metro games where we could really get away with it and distinguish ourselves. So now everyone's back in the same boat. I think they all look good, but boy, did Stalker 2 look Stalker 2 absolutely looks, beautiful. It looked beautiful. That that one scene in their trailer, which I, it looked like gameplay, or at least in Engine, where they're taking like bolt nuts and bolts and like throwing them yes. to see like where anomalies were happening. I was oh. like, that looks so so cool it looks so good i'm uh, i i've never played a stalker game but man it looked amazing uh, i'm sold on it the the icing on the cake for the entire xbox and bethesda uh show was anytime they said game pass day one was on a lot more games than i thought it would be 27 boy, yeah it's an incredible feeling because it's like oh i like a i was for the games i wasn't gonna buy it's like oh i get to play that now and for the games i was gonna buy it's like i'm saving all that money now like mm -hmm. i don't have to think about buying it 
like maybe someday down the line or if there's a really cool collector's edition i'll buy it pick up a copy of it but as for release day i don't have to worry about anything i can go preload it whatever i'm set so i thought that was really neat uh i need to go watch that trailer in 4k uh because i know that oh, it's up yeah. there yeah, that's, that's okay. uh, because i, I watched all that. of these through a discord call so i need to go see what they actually look like <laughs> and not compress to hell uh, and finally on my list, I put party animals, uh, not from the gang beasts or f- human fall flat developers, despite looking very similar. Uh, this... They look like a copy paste. What do you mean? Very similar. I know. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. This The spin on this one looks like you're, it almost looks like you're kind of doing Mario Party mini games while fighting. Or just having straight fighting matches. Because there was like one where they were trying to put coal in the train while it was running. So I feel like there's going to be a party mode where you're like competing in different types of things to complete mini games and all that sort of stuff. I think it looks really cool. Again, coming to Game Pass. Um, I just wanted to give it a shout out because it'll be fun. I think it was 2022 was the release for that. Actually, you're correct. Um, David, you want to hit me up with your list? Psychonauts 2! Finally. He's so happy. Did you play it's the air horn? Yeah, uh, I did earlier, but I can play it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's incredible. I also pulled out a Vuvuzela for it earlier, but I'm not doing that again. <laughs> Were you expecting it to happen? Yeah. Uh, I We did a predictions episode on the Save Data cast, and I was like, Psychonauts 2 is going to be at E3. The release date will be in August, and they'll have Jack Black in the trailer. And I was only long, wrong on the last part. So, uh, I'm so Pretty ready close. for this game. I've been waiting 16 years. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's happening. I'm hyped as hell. It looks hilarious and fun. I'm so ready for it. Oh my god, I'm ready for Psychonauts too. I'm so happy go play for Psychonauts you. <laughs> one. It's on Game Pass, and then play Psychonauts two, which will also be on Game Pass August 25th, 2021. Oh. <sighs> It's a release. So, I'm so happy. Uh, the other one that I'm finally glad has a release date, which is unfortunately a week before Psychonauts, <laughs> is 12 minutes, which I feel like I've been seeing for the past seven years, which might not be that much of an exaggeration. Um, it looks so, it just looks like a very cool game. It's, I, I remember seeing like the teaser for it or the trailer for mm-hmm. it. From, it's Annapurna, right? Annapurna. Yeah, uh, Annapurna's I actually Annapurna's know, publishing. I know, I know someone who works there. Um, and uh, it it just, it was like watching a trailer for an incredibly good looking indie movie. And it was like, I got to see that. And exactly. Like, it all takes so... place in an apartment. Yeah. It, yeah. It, the whole game takes place within 12 minutes in an apartment. It takes like several hours to finish the game because you're basically looping through time making different decisions different dialogue and all that jazz well and the 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 reason i i referenced the indie movie is what in in film school we were always told if you're going to write a script start with like a tight 90 minute script and make it in like the cheapest place to film possible like one location and that's sort of like as soon as i saw this game i was like was that person sitting in like the the <laughs> class with me because that's like this entire game like you only have to build so many assets you know and, and you can focus in on the story and the characters and and what happens way more than you would be if you had to go to like six different locations but it just it looks great i'm i'm super pumped for it um it looks fantastic from vaguely reading the wikipedia page to confirm what i remember it i remember they announced it um it seems like in 2015 and then it won a bunch of I awards was, so it I went that far off with seven years <laughs> yeah it was they they went back to refine the game uh with annapurna then it was re-shown at e3 this is 2019 um oh that's yeah, what they it showed was it at the so, last e3 yeah it was during that time during because it looks it used to look completely different and then during that time after they first showed it that's when they got all the actors on board to be in it yep. so they had to re-record Correct. everything so yeah that's 2019 i knew it had been in, in development big, for a while like they got willem dafoe and daisy ridley and uh james mcavoy james mcavoy that's right mcavoy uh 
<laughs> Cowboy. Uh, so great cast for that one. And I yeah. just want to mention Forza Horizon Five. Like I don't honestly care about Forza games, but God, that looked beautiful. And oh if, yeah. I'm gonna download and play that for a few minutes on Game Pass. Yeah, same. <laughs> I mean, why not? It's free. Why not? I'll play uh, it. It's in the sports outer rim. I'll play it. Um, it looks so pretty. God, it looked pretty. Yeah, that show was really good. They had a lot of games. Uh, too many to mention here, but definitely go back and watch it if if you haven't watched it. It was a tight, tight ninety minutes, and it was just game after game after game, uh, and it was great. We're just gonna keep reusing tight this whole episode. Tight, tight, tight. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, sorry, I meant to go back to you, Kyle. I was gonna say I was. I like, know, no, not, I, I not did. getting out of this. Without I had, me. I had a note. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, give Kyle some screen time. Uh, no. Uh, Redfall. I'm always interested in new IPs, especially from Arcane. Um, and I think they're really like leaning into their namesake with this one. I mean, not Dishonored had like magic and stuff, but this is very, very uh, arcane. And uh, I think it looks really cool. I hope that there are more than just vampires. I'd, I'd like some like other monsters and stuff like that in there. Um, but even just from I know that we didn't see any gameplay and I know that you shouldn't put too much stock in CG trailers, but even just the idea of like the the one uh, character like reloading with magic. I was like, yes, yeah. that's using magic like how a real person would use it. Um, so I think I think maybe that shows even just a, a hint that like, hey, we're trying to do things a little bit differently than maybe you've seen before. I, I love Arcane. I, I'm obsessed with the Dishonored series. I think that it could be really, really cool. And then Halo Infinite. They they didn't show anything, just like I predicted that they wouldn't. Um, they, they did some multiplayer stuff, but Halo multiplayer is Halo multiplayer. It's not yeah. really that difficult for to, to they do showed that. some cool multiplayer stuff outside of the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, there's like a 30 minute, or maybe yeah. it's even longer than that. It's like a very long video about it. I haven't watched it yet, but um, it's good. I, it I looks heard, awesome. I've heard good things. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I am ever since that debacle with, with last year when, when they premiered it. Um, I've been like weirdly intensely interested in seeing what happens because 343 has had so many people leave. Uh, like higher up people in charge of the game leave mm -hmm. and brought new people in and had some of those people leave. And it's like, is this going to be a mess? Are they going to make something that actually stands out from all the other games in the series, let alone just the ones that 343 has made? Um, will it be worth it? Is, is Halo like done? Like, like, is it, is it sort of on its tail end now? I mean, I think with five, it, there's a definite uh, a, a definite case for that because five was hot garbage, um, but yeah. we will see. We will see. I'm excited for Infinite. I'm a, I'm a big Halo boy and I'm back on board. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm just interested in in a open semi open world Halo. Sounds interesting to me. So we'll see. Yeah. Um. Great. Sorry, I was trying to mix up the order of people and I. <laughs> you just well, made me feel unimportant instead. Yeah. It's fine. No, don't it's worry fine. about it. I mean, that was the you're minor just, you're goal. Just, you're taking over for Ian. I get it. You, yeah. you have to, you have standards. Do you want me to shit on something you love? Because that's what Ian does. Um, <laughs> God, I hate him. Uh, moving <laughs> on to Nintendo. Um, I'm going to start with Kyle. Kyle, you get to talk more. Just give me. Oh, God. Fine. Um, Dave, I just noticed David and I's lists are Our exactly list is the same. same. Oh, <laughs> <Out of order. laughs> okay, you oh. both go at the same time. Um, um, David, you take the first one. I'll take the second one, and we'll tag team the last one. All right. First on your list or my list? Whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's your choice. Uh, I'll start with Advance Wars One Plus Two Reboot Camp. Fantastic awesome. name, first of all. Um, yes. Second, I miss Advance Wars. Please make yeah. a new one. I, I hope that this galvanizes, like, like the sales are good enough that it galvanizes Nintendo into actually creating new content rather That's than my just hope. rehashing what they already have. But. That's my hope. I guess the, like, I like that they're rebooting these games. I, I like the 3D stuff. I'm not too big on the 2D animation that they showed. Um, it, it looks, I, I actually wasn't that big on the 3D stuff. I, I, I prefer the 2D art style of the gba stuff but at the I same time the 2d art style in general but the 2d yeah. they went with in the trailer i did not like whereas the 3d i was like okay that's i'm okay with that yeah 
Yeah, I, I think there'll be at least a little bit of refinement um, yeah. moving forward. But we'll see. I'm just excited to have Advance Wars come back. Someone on Reddit, like, I think it was a day or two before E3, there was a, a thread about predictions. And, like, one random person was like, for the love of God, please bring back Advanced Wars. <laughs> and then in the, in the uh, trailer uh, thread when it dropped... It was like, where's the Advanced Wars guy? And he was like, I'm here. I exist. He was just so happy. Um, Intelligent was, systems it, forgotten. IP. Yeah. 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 And I, yeah, I, I, isn't it, it's someone else is. Way forwards it? making it, which yeah, I and, feel. And intelligent. Not intelligent great about way forward being the consulting one Consulting or something. I don't know. It's, it's weird. Yeah. Intelligent systems consulting way forwards working on it, but yeah. I don't think way forward makes very good games. So I'm a little concerned, but we'll see. Yeah. But um, I, I watched a little bit of the Treehouse stuff and it, it looked like advanced war. So, or advanced wars. So we'll see what happens, but um, I will go on to the next one, which I'm going to choose as Metroid dread. What can I say? I mean, we all wanted the new Metroid and this was uh, a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. Uh, I actually said when we were, when I was, when I was illegally streaming the Nintendo stream, on <gasps> Twitch, um, which I also found out, it was just for Japan. They Nintendo said that Jap Japanese streamers couldn't stream the Nintendo uh, Direct. Nintendo, which is, please. Which is because there's no there's no fair use law in Japan, so it's they have to like worry about <laughs> crap like that. Anyway, that's why it was only the Japanese Nintendo Twitter account that put out that thing, and not the Nintendo of America stuff. Anyway, Nintendo um, announced Metroid Dread, which is a 3D side scrolling Metroid entry a la you know Metroid Zero Mission or or Fusion uh and I'm super pumped for it because I grew up on those GBA games and love them to death and this looks like the next evolution of that and it looks great it looks creepy it looks like a Metroid game I I'm I'm ready for some side scrolling goodness I'm I'm just really pumped for it I think it looks great On the flip side I've never played a Metroid game period oh. and this looked good so i want to dive in yeah i don't I, I think i dabbled with super metroid at one point mm -hmm. um maybe on switch the nintendo switch online thing um and i did not like the eight point targeting but like this mm -hmm. has free targeting so i'm in ready to play this creepy fun looking thing it it reminded me a lot of Metroid Fusion, which is the the storyline. There's kind of I haven't played it in a while, but there's like a there's like a a Samus clone in like a Metroid suit of armor. It's it's Ooh. really creepy, and like you have to like run away from it in certain sections. And the monsters chasing you in the trailer of this one looked very much like that sort of vein of of uh, gameplay. Yeah. So I'm I'm pumped. And then uh, this is for everyone because it's on everyone's list. Yeah, Breath of the Wild too. I mean, we Ooh. knew it was gonna it was gonna be here, but man, even that little tiny trailer was was enough to get me going. They had cool the right stuff ways. in this trailer, though. Yeah, like yeah, they, there's they... you had to slow down and really like analyze it, but like there's some neat crap in here. Yeah, like there's seemingly some like time rewind and fast forward abilities like link's got a weird messed up future arm he's, he's oh, yeah, pulling the... a uh um a miyazaki with his with his uh yeah. weird demon arm the um trailer played backwards plays the original breath of the wild music yeah like that's crazy the giant like uh the Bo Bo Bogoblins, Bogoblins riding Bogoblins. the uh Bogoblins? is that what it is Boca, Boca, Boca Goblin, Boca 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 Goblin. We know what you mean. Anyways, riding the giant <laughs> stone monster was really that cool. Was cool. It gave me like uh like Muma Kill from uh Lord of the Rings sort of vibes. Mm. Um yeah, it seemed really neat. I I watched that trailer and um I think I'm I think I'm gonna go back and finally finish Breath of the Wild. Uh Wait, how have you, you not finished it? I here's my brief Breath of the Wild uh, uh, history. Well, I bought well. Breath of the Wild on Amazon for the Wii U. It didn't show up in time, <laughs> so I downloaded it on the Wii U. Then my hard copy showed up. 
So I still have a sealed copy of Breath of the Wild for the Wii U if anyone wants it. No, you can't have it. It's mine. Then I moved to Jersey City. No, sorry. Always, then always there. No, no, sorry. Yeah, then I bought a Switch. Then I bought Breath of the Wild for the Switch. Started Breath of the Wild over after putting about maybe 50 hours into it. Then I moved to Jersey City, and then I have... N- I have touched it one other time where I put another hour into a new new save. Um, so, so you bought this game three times yeah. and have not finished it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I <know>. well. <laughs> yeah, I need to finish it. I'm just stuck between whether or not I should emulate it on my computer or play it on the switch. Uh, Cause I kind of want to yeah, play can, it in 4k. You can... I was just gonna say you could run it in 4K 60 on your on your on Simu or whatever. That's what I was thinking of doing. Plus, you can add some pretty good mods like the Dragon Ball Dragon and Thomas the Tank Engine. All those all those nude mods I know you have saved. Yes, uh, all my only Link though. Oh, uh, I, I wouldn't I, hurt I, Zelda I, like I that. Do, I always do Ganondorf. So. <laughs> yes, Ganon Dong's more like it. Um, but yes, I will finish Breath of the Wild one before Breath of the Wild two comes out. Um, I promise, David. I promise. You gotta finish it like three times to get your money's worth. Jesus, <laughs> I can't. I have bought it three test times. Out that, test out that Amazon refund policy. So I, you feel... <laughs> I know, right? The bright side is, maybe, I was thinking maybe the Wii U version will be rare. Um, no one wants to play that on Wii U. <laughs> no one wanted to. Yeah, Wii but U, think so about I... in like forty-five years, where all the the Zoomers are like, ah, the, Wii, the U. Wii U game. No, all the good Wii U games got ported to Switch. You don't even need it anymore. <laughs> yeah, but the Zoomies want to play it on the original hardware. No, they don't. No, they don't. They want to emulate it. I <laughs> know. I oh, love they my watch Wii U. Someone else play it. Come on. I want to dig it out and marry it. Oh, it's the best. Um. Yeah, uh, so I'll go through the rest of my list. Mario Party Superstars, very excited. They're taking the best of the N64 Mario Parties and shoving it into the 21st century. And unlike the stupid Mario Party game, Super Mario Party, they're letting you use pro controllers um, because... Yeah. Ugh. But yeah, they literally... Yeah, showing off some of my favorite maps. Uh, do I think this could have just been DLC for Super Mario Party? Probably. Uh, am I mad that it's another $60 game? Yes. Uh, am I still going to pay for it? And have I already pre-ordered it? Yes. The answer is yes. Because there was a Target buy two, get one free. So I pre-ordered that, WarioWare, and Advance Wars. Uh, despite awesome. never That's playing... A good deal. Advance Wars. So I think it came out to it was 120 because it was the 260s and then the $50 one was the free one. I will say <sighs> I don't I don't know if they should be charging $60 for Advanced Wars. Yeah, that seems, I that seems real steep. I, and I've never played Advanced Wars, but it seems like my jam. Um I think it's steeper for Mario Party than it is for Advanced Wars. Yeah. yeah. Plus I don't usually play physical Switch games, but I, it was a too good of a deal to pass up so i went for it uh yeah. also i am a huge fan of monkey ball i played a lot of monkey ball at my friend's house growing up he had a gamecube and those mini games were great also the monkey ball uh, arcade machine is at uh the jersey or at least it was when i went the jersey city barcade and uh that is just a giant banana controller and it's great um so very much looking forward to that i like super monkey ball i gotta pre-order this as well but i'll buy it digitally because i want to save the planet or whatever um whatever that means overall nintendo i thought was great i think i don't know if you guys agree i think xbox was the best in show uh if people i don't know why people rate them but i mean it makes sense when square enix and uh Oh man, that PC game show was awful. Ian and I decided next bad. year we are not. I and Kyle and I. Uh, Ian, Kyle, we, and I decided next ones, year. This year was not one of them. It's it was the, so bad. The gimmick isn't funny. It's just. It was, yeah. I just it, it. It was the fact that they advertised Gabe Newell as like, "Hey, he's gonna announce something." And he really didn't say cool. anything. And he was literally on screen for twenty seconds and was like, 
Oh yeah, Valve's doing this. We're like we're do there's stuff. Yeah, going on. and yeah. also <laughs> Mech Warrior Five was the sponsor. Why? So weird. Why were they? I didn't. Maybe maybe they had like an excess marketing budget, and the the, yeah. the marketing director was like, just we'll we'll sponsor this thing and be really annoying at this game show. People are gonna love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just it was a weird thing. Um. Yeah, it was super weird. But overall, uh, I, I thought Nintendo was great, and Xbox was great, and everyone else was just okay, and some of them were god-awful. Uh, but moving forward, we have a little miscellaneous section here just to catch all of the uh, the stuff that didn't quite make it in. Uh, so we'll run through these quick. Uh, Elden Ring, I'm excited for. Um, trying to just, I own Sekiro. I'm trying to decide if I should go give it a try for a bit. Um... I don't know if either of you are Souls fans. Um, I have played I, a I little bit be, of Sekiro. I would like to be a Souls fan, I, but I've never really. I, I think I, I think I played one, like for an hour, and was like, "Oh, this is fun." And maybe that was <laughs> enough. Maybe that wasn't far enough to feel like I was being punished. But yeah, uh, I don't know. I've uh, it, it was I've only beaten Bloodborne. I have played all of the other ones. Uh, I have Demon Souls for the PS5. I haven't touched it yet. Um, maybe I should do that. That might be a better warm up. I um, heard from from Zach from Save Data that Demon Souls it plays like the PS3 one and not necessarily in a good way. So you might want to play Sekiro. I only played a few hours and only beat like a few mini bosses and maybe one actual boss. I don't actually know if I killed lady butterfly or not um don't remember but i i enjoyed it but man i had issues with not knowing where the hell to go and yeah. going the wrong places <laughs> i feel like that was their attempt at making like because they gave you the rope and the open world stuff and i think it kind of threw their tight level design into a hole uh into a trash can so i feel oh, like were cool i just ended yeah. up in places where i didn't have abilities that i needed to beat the boss <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we'll see we'll see what happens um uh, i am excited Sorry. for elden ring though i'm not i'm not crying because of elden ring there's something in my eye yeah we me tear up. <laughs> okay oh if you gosh. need to go rinse your eye out no feel free. Okay. i think i got it he's really tearing Ooh. up he gets very emotional um Especially when George R. R. Martin i hate when i get man. something stuck in my eyes <laughs> literally the worst it's just like instant like literally it's like right here oh my continue please um i'm just gonna keep crying i'm also very excited for death stranding director's cut uh, yes. uh famously everyone makes fun of me for liking death stranding i really don't like and it as, i yeah i know you do I'm, but I'm you right don't get the flack me. um i don't it's like it as, I'm not i mean every week. it's not the best <laughs> game ever made game. i pretend it's the best game ever made i am just i'm really into the gameplay of that game i felt it i found it very therapeutic and fun in a in a repeatable uh dumb sort of way um i know everyone else hates it i agree the story is awful i think the world building's cool a lot of the stuff is stupid i completely agree but people like stupid things sometimes and i'm one of those people who likes this stupid thing and i want to see what more kind of bullshit stupid stuff this man whom i'm in love with shoves into it because apparently the first version wasn't his director's cut so if he wants to add sneaking missions or whatever the frick he wants to add to it i think that'll be cool and i will pay the money for it and i will probably beat the game again because i like it you're you sucker i love it <laughs> i love it i'm Mister. right there i'm right there with you Listen, man i i it was different it was a new ip it was an experimental thing it's not everyone's cup of tea it's boring but I liked it, and and it was beautiful. Oh my gosh! Seriously, one oh. of the best PC ports ever. Gorgeous like, game. It, it it is so beautiful to look at, and I know they did like a billion things of photogrammetry and um, DLSS. That was like the first game I experienced DLSS, and was like, holy crap! This makes such a huge difference. Um, and I just I don't know. I even I'm I'm even willing to go so far as to say the story is not that bad. It's just too much. Yeah. It's like, it's too much Kojima. Like you need to have a producer come in and yeah. say, 
you gotta you gotta I, slow down <laughs> yeah i need to buy the pc version i only have the ps4 digital i have the collector's edition uh for a price alert for whenever it drops below i think i said it to 70 dollars. it hit 90 at one point i almost pulled the trigger what comes with that is it you a, get a baby you get a baby yeah, you get you a get baby. baby um <laughs> I also you have a live baby. <laughs> I have reference photos f- and uh, like a reference sheet with links to make a cosplay of uh, of a a, uh, a porter. I guess they would be called a delivery man. Did I did I show you the picture that I took at New York Comic Con where there was a full size Sam Bridges <gasps> oh, um, with the those. most realistic looking skin and hair Ooh. follicles I've ever seen in my entire life. I um so yeah I have a bunch of here. reference photos that Pelican case I actually made for our the subpixel save data camera is I have a bunch of stickers I have the tape that that says the do not tamper oh it's so good I love it absolutely love it I am I fully agree it is not the best game in the world it is I love a stupid game but people are allowed to love stupid games you love Psychonauts so hey, let's just move you on. shut your mouth <laughs> You wow. shut your mouth. Chris God, I will leave Chris this Kingdom Hearts. right now. I will just close People like the- Kingdom Hearts. Don't come at me. Um, okay, uh, moving on. Uh, I d- did a quick note. Oh, Kyle, you sent me a hot, hot image that I'm going to crop you out of. Um, all of the Game Pass stuff I thought was super exciting. Uh, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but yeah, it's just exciting. Uh, Diablo 2 Resurrected, I am excited for, uh, mostly because I'm going to have to buy it on PC, Xbox, and the Switch because it is cross-progression. Uh, I don't give I won't, I won't, that much money. I won't actually do that. I'll probably only buy it on PC. Oh, good. But good. if it ever goes on sale on the other two consoles, I would definitely pay for it there. Um for sure oh man these are good these are good reference photos yeah i i um yeah i have a sam not a i didn't want to do sam porter bridges but i have a a a, a delivery guy cosplay in the works mm. that i will get to eventually right after my grail diary when i get back to working on that my printer's fixed uh and finally two point campus which i could have sworn was called two point university I think nope. it's a I think it's, I think it's a Berenstein Bears situation. Mm. I think an alternate dimension closed and I have a distinct uh I forget what they call that wormhole memory of it. Um but I could have sworn it was two point university. Uh I didn't play Two Point Hospital, but I'm intrigued by those sort of games. Mostly because I don't like medical stuff, hospital stuff, um, even though they make it goofy. Um yeah so those are that's my miscellaneous uh kyle you want to hit your miscellaneous yeah um really just two and they're they're kind of smaller games but somerville uh from dano patty or uh, dino patty dino patty i can't remember dino patty name, could he, you meet you the guy yeah uh the guy behind limbo and inside i've never played inside but i love limbo from back in the day i think it actually weirdly kind of somerville looks like death stranding a little bit where there's like Yes. dark stuff in the sky uh, maybe i'm in. just drawn to like that aesthetic but yeah. um it's kind of lovecraftian looking a, a little bit but it just looks mysterious and interesting and i i love a good i love a good little little game like that and then um sable which is sort of like this mobius art style inspired open world exploration game i actually don't know too much about it other than i love the way it looks um and I'm just really, really excited for it. it. It looks, it looks interesting and different. It actually looks like something that Jake would make. Um, yeah. So I, totally, I, I, I think he would actually really appreciate it. But um, yeah, pump for those two. I um, I played the Sable demo on the Xbox, and uh, See, this is why I need a console. <laughs> I so yeah, I it's played... not available on the PC Xbox app. I was sad. Um, oh that's stupid so i played the sable tunic and lake demos Mm. i played about 10 minutes each of them and i quit and uninstalled them 10 minutes in because for each game i realized this is a game i'm gonna play and i don't want to play the demo so (laughs) yeah that's uh, that's good though the tunic demo was the only one that was like hey this is an express built demo for you to Mm. experience everything 
uh the other two were just the beginnings of the game so those more than anything i i just quit early because i was like i don't want to invest time here and then have a weird deja vu later but uh man that sable game a i think needs a little bit more work from the demo and b is absolutely gorgeous in practice um just i was riding the bike around and like the smoke comes out behind it and yeah it was so yeah uh david hit me with your miscellaneous Oh yeah, Trek to Yomi. This was a game in the Devolver Digital presentation, which is man, Don't it's an some. Akira Kurosawa samurai ass game. Uh, it looks like a two D side scroller. You play as a samurai. You fight samurai. That's my jam. It looks so good. Like I really enjoyed Ghost of Tsushima. This looks like more of that. So coming next year. Who did you uh, say it looked like? That. Akira Kurosawa. Okay. I heard Toriyama or, or Ghost of Shish- and I was I really might have said good. Toriyama but I, I meant Kurosawa. I heard, I heard Kurosawa. <laughs> okay, good. I w- I stopped paying attention cuz I was googling it and so as I was googling it I was expecting <laughs> Dragon Ball Zam- Samurai and then I just got really confused. <laughs> that would be cool though. I'm still confused about Eve's uh Gim G- however you pronounce it. Gimmel? Name. Yeah. Cuz oh, we this had the mix up last so week. Oh, cool. <laughs> It looks yeah. really good. I, di- I didn't watch the Devolver one, so... I, I also didn't either, so I have no idea. Trick. Uh, it looks really... They had a couple other games that look neat, but this is the one that was very much... Ooh. This is a David-ass game. Uh, so I'm going to be playing this yeah, one. Yeah, this looks really sure. cool. David-ass game. David uh, ass don't game. Google that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, not what you want. Another one that looked really good from the... Uh, summer game fest was metal slug tactics it looked Ooh, like yeah i have no interest like i've never played a metal slug game but i've always loved their art style and this is metal slug meets final fantasy tactics which i'm here for so that just looked awesome looking forward to that uh and then tales of arise i'm a big tales game fan i think probably talked about that on this show before yes you have Lo- love me some tales games concerned whether this one will be a good one or a bad one but looking forward to it <laughs> Uh, I got to see a lot more of the characters uh, recently, though, which was very cool. And, and the last highlight was actually just someone getting roasted today with the Xbox Extended Play, where they were going through uh, some of their games and the reopening of Design Labs, where the host roasted one of his friends for not being able to cook with his Design Labs <laughs> controller. And what? it is one of the funniest things I've seen in a presentation. I, I... We have that clip? Yeah. Yeah, well, That's yeah, fine. we'll put that clip uh, up. I, I can find it, yeah. <laughs> I may have issues with some of the individuals involved, but I did see the clip, and it was absolutely hilarious. Um, the fact that it just cuts in to the controller, and it what it says, what did it say? He Ka is can't be- cook. Ka can't cook. And <laughs> the I was watching the one that had Greg Miller in it. Like, he was watching the oh, yeah, yeah. his reaction to it, and it was... It was genuinely extremely funny because it was just one guy roasting another guy in a position of power. And it was so funny. Uh, I I lost it. It was very good. Um, So definitely go check that out. Um, Wow. That was a lot of stuff. Who I didn't think we could get through it, but I'm glad we did it my way. because I don't think it would have been as good if we were just reading through every press conference. Now, uh, nope. the choice that matters, because we've gone a little bit long here, uh, is do you guys want to talk through this news, or do you want to do some subpixel rating system? Let's do rating. Who cares rating. about news? Rating, yeah. Cool. Uh, I'll just do quick news is... Um, that's stupid. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's creator retires uh, after... There was a lot of stuff with that that I don't even know, so I'm not donating to political figures. Yes, and with, with... Yep. and then Cyberpunk 2020 2070 crappin. It's not great. It still sucks. It might be coming back to PS4. And then the Ubisoft massive studio head uh, is stepping down. Um, that is the Ubisoft place that is making Avatar that we so lovingly talked about earlier. Star Wars. <laughs> the day after they announced the game, they yeah. like, oh, I'm out. What Star I Wars can't thing imagine they're doing they're doing, they're yeah, doing a, a massive game. Star Wars game. Oh, they, they, they announced that. that they were working on it, but not I like I I don't know if it was internal politics or personal stuff. I cannot imagine the stress he's under managing two 
massive ips like that like that's got to be yeah. crazy plus whatever they're doing with the division so like yeah. three yeah <laughs> uh, uh ubisoft original uh ubisoft original um uh, okay we are gonna hit the list um i don't have a game but if you two have games we can add two games two two games to the list oh i got i wrote down three games okay so i'll give you two games then i'm being generous today i mean kyle probably won some games too but um no, Kyle doesn't deserve anything. Wow. I, I mean, I, I got a game on last week, so I feel like I would... You I would did. Half-Life is right. I, man, there's not enough time in the world. Uh, David, I'll start with you, <laughs> sir. What would you like to oh, add? Oh, it's Titanfall 2. Dude, yes. I'll just put it at the bottom. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I will vote for that. Game. You're so wrong, Will. I know, I'm kidding. I genuinely you like Titanfall 2. <laughs> It's just because you because like it, it wasn't a dumb multiplayer game. It had a good story. I mean, it's not it's not Brink, but you know that's true. <laughs> it's no what I game mean, is Brink? It's no it's no Death Stranding. <laughs> um, okay, David, tell me what tell me about Titanfall Two and where you would put it. Listen, I got into Titanfall Two really late. I didn't even play the multiplayer. I've just heard it's fantastic. Thank but that you. single player campaign. With best friend robot BT, that is the best first person shooter campaign that I've ever played. Yep. Hundred percent. Mechanically, story wise, it just kicks butt the entire way through, engaging the whole way through. Shooting is fantastic in that game. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. <laughs> You've gotta talk about the cause and effect level. I mean, listen, I don't wanna spoil it, but Man, <laughs> there were some causes and there were some effects. There was some causes and there was some effects. I there was some pants. emotions. There was some <sighs> blinking in and out of different things that just had really excellently de- one of the best design levels in a video game. Yeah. Cause and effect is mm-hmm. uh, honestly put this above Factorio. Excuse- it's high praise. Excuse me. I mean, <laughs> granted, I disagree with more than half of your list of where it Listen, is. But I, I put it above I, every one of you. <laughs> one of you save data pieces of crap on your stupid little podcast. Now I'm kidding. But you guys, every time this comes up on around the monitor, you all act like we all agree with this list. I hate this list so much. Every one of us Ian hates this list. list. Ian hates there this is, list. He hates Outer no, Wilds. He yeah, doesn't I, want it up there. <laughs> um, I don't want. I don't want Factorio up there. It's just, it deserves to be there because it's a perfect video game. But if I had my way or the highway, I think, I think control would be even higher. And I think Shadow of the Colossus would be even lower. But that's just what we do. We make compromises because we're all friends. Titanfall 2, new number three. I can't argue with that. It makes sense. I'm going to, I'm going to agree. It's it's gonna oh, be. Oh, Ian's there. gonna kill me for that. that. Was easy. That was I just, easy. I just wanna, I want to I want to get Yakuza Zero down as far as possible. Oh, shut up, you stupid idiot! <laughs> I've never played a Yakuza game. I have you no bias. To, you, you should play that either. game. You That's why genuinely... I put it below Yakuza because I literally have no idea what it's, it's like. So it's the only <laughs> Yakuza game I will probably ever play. I'm gonna try like a dragon, but it. You that like aside, Dragon Quest now. You should love like a dragon. I know. <laughs> Uh, that aside, Yakuza Zero is just a fantastic video game. Uh, it's like that foreign film everyone tells you about, and you don't watch it, and then you finally sit down to watch it, and it's incredible. Um, <laughs> it's it's and then it's you're that. like, yeah, it was okay. It was alright. Yeah, it was okay. Um, oh man, I don't know if I can put it over Factorio, but I, I'm, I'll let I you two out with me. That way, he doesn't necessarily blame me. I mean, you already said it, so you already signed I don't think, your death warrant. Uh, this isn't recorded, so <laughs> don't worry about it. I'll just bleep all that out. Um, cool. That happened. So sorry, Ian. Um, I love Factorio, but I, I must. I, I, this isn't me trying to get out of it like some sort of trial, but I. Um, <laughs> It's weird. It really seems a like lot it. of these games can't be compared to each other. Like Factorio is the pinnacle of that style of game. 
and yeah, that style of game is just work so i don't want it yeah that's oh, so good oh so good <laughs> it's like it's like the death stranding of that type of game you know it's just so perfect oh my. <laughs> gameplay wise i mean um kyle what do you got for me what are we putting on here um well don't say death I, stranding. I there's just there's a small indie game called death stranding oh, and, uh, no um i <laughs> I had thought that I was going to recommend this game um, uh, the last time I was on and, and we recommended games, but then I went with Half-Life instead. So I'm going to do it this this time. Um, it is Red Dead Redemption 1. Ooh. Ooh. I have no stakes in this. I've never played that game. Daddy okay. likes this game. Does this include the DLC? Because yeah, I I would include nightmare. Yeah, I, I would include nightmare. Uh, Red Dead Nightmare. Red Dead Red Red, Red Dead Undead Red Nightmare. Fall. Undead Nightmare. Red Dead yeah, Undead yeah, yeah, Nightmare. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. Um, boy, um, one of the best like DLCs of any game. Ever. Oh, and so, standalone DLC. Yeah, it was incredible. Yeah. Um, so I I played this game probably a year or two after it came out i didn't have a 360 at the time and it wasn't until college that i played it and i think it was like freshman year of college or something and it knocked me on my ass story-wise it is and, and i it's one of the reasons why i love the red dead series as a whole is because regardless of ian's issues with anything good um it it has <laughs> such such and i'm sorry ian you're not here um <laughs> It has such a good story and it's told so well. There's obviously it's not perfect because I don't think any game story is perfect, but the way it's told, the way you experience it, the way you work your way through the world and through John Marston's story, it it just has this this incredibly strong emotional resonance with me. And I know it did for a lot of other people. And I think any game that can pull that off is worthy of of being, you know, lauded and 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 uh Put up into the the annals, annals of video game history. What is that word? I think annals. 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 Yeah. yeah. Annals. I think it's annals. It's not the ban annals banal. Of... It's the other banal yeah. and annals. Ban ban banal. Anal. Um. um where and we... and I do also think that it does. A, a, I mean, it, it's sort of like Rockstar, but tamed. Uh, from from what they are now, but like it's 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 like yeah, butt tamed. <laughs> Sorry, we're doing a lot of we're doing a lot of butt stuff on this stream, way more than I ever thought we would. But hey, that's cool with me. <laughs> um, I don't know where I would put it. I th I'm thinking I'm like think too. I'm th honestly, I'm thinking maybe like eight or nine, somewhere around there. I'm trying to decide if it's better not... than Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah, it that's a tough one because I do love Kotor. Like I, I um, think it is better than Half Life, but I don't know if it's better than Star Wars Nine. I could, Republic. I, I, I would. We could put it at a at a six. I'd be okay with that. I don't. It's better than Firewatch. That much is yeah. oh, entirely yeah, I mean, true. Yeah. Mm, I would put it at. I, I'd do the new number eight. David, I've, I've what are your two senses? I haven't played the game. So, and I I don't have strong feelings about any of the games really around there, so that's fine. <laughs> okay. okay. Man, this is so much easier without Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ian. See, the thing with Red Dead Redemption is it's the first game, and it's terrible. Uh, because when I was playing it, uh, my uh, pet rabbit died, so I hate it. Uh, thanks, Ian, for that. That was great. Uh, I'm glad you could call in. Uh, okay, David, you have one more game. I'll give you. I'll give you guys a choice: Cuphead or Celeste. Which one? Oh no! People hate when I talk about Celeste. Cuphead, it is. Um, <laughs> I've, I've you... never played either, so I don't have a dog in this fight. Were you? Did you watch the Save Data Summer Games Fest? Me? Did I? No, no uh, or either of you, because I, I told them I played. They were like, "Oh, Celeste soundtrack so great," and I said, "I didn't hear it because I played Celeste while oh. rewatching Game of Thrones." 
<laughs> yeah, wow. you missed like a really good soundtrack. <laughs> that was a mistake. <laughs> Everyone's like, that's a mistake. I was like, I I was watching a show with my girlfriend and I, I had seen it before, so I just played Celeste. Like I heard the bits of it, it's pretty amazing. good, but it's it's like, amazing people soundtrack. were so mad at me. Um yeah, it is so, one of the best indie game soundtracks, so you, you should listen yeah. to it. Listen, I'll get there. Music's overrated. We'll do cuphead though. We'll do some cuphead. Um Cuphead. Where do you, you give me your spiel? Where does it go? You know Listen, the drill. Cuphead, difficult game, fun game, fantastic art style. Yes. Like, oh my <gasps> god, painstakingly. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. <laughs> Just leave it. Leave it like this. Leave it like this. <laughs> Whoops. Everything's Cuphead. Everything's Cuphead. <laughs> That's what I meant to do. There we go. It belongs in all spaces, <laughs> one through thirty. All is Cuphead. <laughs> one through we're thirty are all we're Cuphead. Talk, we're talking about number Cuphead today. Uh, what, what do you guys think Cuphead should be? In Ooh, uh Anyways, continue. <laughs> oh man, I mean that's really it. Like it's difficult. It's fun. It's we've been saying it all day, but it's a tight game. The music is great. Music yes. is great. Aesthetic is great. It nails it. Overall, a Great game, great indie game. Ah, <sighs> where to put it on this list though? It's hard because like most of six through, I'm twenty. Thinking, I don't agree with. <laughs> I'm I'm thinking definitely above Brink. Definitely above. Brink. Oh, it's above Brink. Yeah. Um, above yeah, No Man's Sky. I put above that. I think I know. I'm where gonna I put say. Place. I would. I'm gonna say number fourteen. Mm, no, nah, I'm gonna disagree with that. I I would put it at 16. Not not to say that it's a middling game because I do not think that it is, but I don't think it's better than Shadow of the Colossus or Mass Effect 2. Well, I'm saying put it below Mass Effect 2. Put it 14. Oh, I first I thought you said 13. Sorry. Uh, 13. Um. And listen, I don't think it's better than Shadow of the Colossus either, but I also think <laughs> Shadow Prey of the Colossus is not in the right place. Yeah. <laughs> Shadow, I, I, joking aside, Shadow of the Colossus should be way higher. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, I forgot we have like, the okay, amendment I, to rediscuss, but... Ignoring oh, that Shadow of yeah. the Colossus is in a, like, measly spot that it deserves better than... So you're saying that's above why I'm Prey. Saying Prey. I I could I'd be okay yeah. with that. You know, honestly, knowing that too. Shadow of the Colossus may move in the future, and that um, yes, I, Outer Worlds, Outer Wilds is definitely going to move, then yes, eventually. This is so That's easy something. without Ian. I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, I dread. I want to do a final episode where we get like five or six of us to all rediscuss everything and after oh, you rediscuss so someone chooses a game rediscusses it and then we all agree where it goes but once we agree where it goes it's it's Can't there move. yeah so uh, who, i want to do a who, big stream for that but who suggested the outer worlds because there's no that was that, me that was, <laughs> that was the me. very first one oh, but we all me. sorry um no you did outer wilds outer, outer wilds was yeah me. I did so outer worlds was the <laughs> the one we started with because me chris and ian decided it was the perfect five out of ten okay. so the original yeah. idea for this list was was different and then it became chaotic because chris and i and ian were involved um yeah, yeah. I, i'm okay with that cuphead is is now well Good. prey 2017 is now the perfect five out of ten Oh, I mean, Jake, so Jake's so gonna sorry. have some issues with that, but Jake and Zach from my side. <laughs> I, can't have, I can never have OP back on the show because he will, <laughs> he will be so crushed. Uh, don't listen to this episode. Um, great, we have our our new ranking. It was easy without people here. Uh, I'm gonna read through them because I do this every time. <clears throat> Number one, Outer Wilds. Number two, Yak is a zero. Number three, new number three, Titanfall 2. Number four, Factorio. Number five, Doom 1993. Number six, Half Dash Life. Number seven, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Number eight, Red Dead Redemption. Number nine, Firewatch. Number 10, Mirror's Edge. Number 11, Ghost of Tsushima. 
Number 12, Control. Number 13, Mass Effect 2. Number 14, New Edition, Cuphead. Number 15, Prey 2017. Number 16, Shadow of the Colossus. Number 17, Star Wars Battlefront 2004. Number 18, Horizon Zero Dawn. Number 19, Battlefield 1943. Number 20, Middle Dash, Earth, Colon, Shadow of Mordor. Number 21, The Outer Worlds. Number 22, Gone Home. Number 23, Fallout 4. What did I forget? Oh, hey, I'm sorry. Forward. I forgot to say Red Dead Redemption was new. <laughs> sorry. I apologize, Red Dead Redemption. Uh, 24 Fallout 4, 25 No Man's Sky, 26 Daisy, 27 Donkey Kong 64, 28 Brink, 29 Kingdom Hearts 3, and number 30, the worst game of all time, according to the Subpixel rating system, is Cyberpunk 2077. All is right in the world. Folks, it's we, time we to do play. have a comment. Oh, that no. has nothing to, nothing to do with the subpixel rating system. Uh, the tree troll has asked, "Can you guys suggest a good brand of chair?" Ooh, the um, Eames chair. <laughs> and how automated. much money you're willing yeah. to separate from? Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, so I went on a chair search for a very long time. I tried about three of them. The chair I'm using is the autonomous AI, dot AI is the website and it's the Mio. I think it might be the two or the one. Uh, it is fantastic. I love it. it. It was only $180, but it's a great chair and uh, it locks and it does cool things and it's mesh and it's comfortable. So you want a good chair like that. I assume yeah, you I've, mean the desktop chair. So yeah, I've got like a hashtag gamer chair, but it's less flashy than the other ones. It's a secret lab Omega um, and it, you know, it reclines all that. <laughs> um, all that stuff. Uh, you can go up and down. Of course, I'm all the way down because I need to be because my desk is low. And yeah, it's it's comfortable. I mean, any I think any chair is going to get uncomfortable if you're sitting in it for five hours. Uh, like I do for work, but I think it's really comfortable. There's nice uh, lumbar support. Ooh, lumbar. So, fancy. And um, it was a little expensive. It was like actually a lot expensive, but I got a discount on it, I think for like 15%. So it wasn't too bad. And uh, I think you can finance if you really want to. But yeah, it, it's it's I've had it for like three years now and it's great. I like it. I have Finance opposite me. feelings on the uh, secret lab chairs. It destroyed my back and I returned one. So. Oh no. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I got a Herman Miller. They are pricey. Buy them used oh, from geez. offices that go out of business. Oh, yeah. that's smart. That's the way to buy them. <laughs> um, great, folks. It's time to play the music. That was, a, that was a good episode. I had a blast with you, gentlemen. Thank you for being here. This is our longest episode yet. That's uh, great. That's crazy. Uh, so really, you're saying Ian's been holding us back. <laughs> yeah, that's honestly, that's what I've, I've been meaning to say for, for a long time now. Um, folks, if you enjoyed this, please, please consider going to anchor.fm slash local chat where you can actually support us uh, or you can find all sorts of links to download the podcast. Please maybe go leave us a review on iTunes. That would also be super, super cool. Joining me this week was kyle bailey uh you can find him on twitter at kyle of the beard also joining us was david from save data you can find him on twitter at uh just find save data at save data you... team on all your social media everywhere do it do it you won't I um did. you yeah. can also find all of our hot hot content at subpixelfilms.com they'll bring straight to our youtube channel or you can check out our stream archives just search subpixel streams on youtube and that will bring you straight to our stream archive uh saturday i'm not sure what we're doing yet i will let everyone know through the twitter that is uh subpixel team on twitter um yeah i gotta think of that uh next tuesday is the premiere of our kerbal space program show so definitely tune in for that putting a lot of work into it i gotta finish a lot of stuff this weekend get stuff set up so that is going to be super fun uh gentlemen thank you again for joining me and folks we will see you all in the future and the future is next week